missed Christmas for the last five years with this horse, so it all counts down. It all comes to this. Stay with us. King George VI chase, three miles, 17 fences, and a place in racing's Hall of Fame. And it's as magnificent a renewal as you could possibly wish to find. The last four home last year, plus uh, all the other stars you want. There are nine runners altogether, because Coden, as we know, runs at Weatherby. The full list now from Graham Good. And these nine runners have won 99 races between them and over £2,300,000 in win and place prize money. Of course, a principal contributor is a French trained Algat at 14 to 1, ridden by Philippe Chevalier. Barton Bank at 7 to 2 is ridden by Adrian Maguire. The 11 to 4 favourite is Bradbury Star, Philip Hyde on board. Codron doesn't take part, he's running in about uh, 20 minutes time up at Weatherby. Gail again at 25 to 1 is ridden by Graham Bradley. Monsieur Le Cure is partnered by Norman Williamson and they're down to 7 to 1 now. Second schedule at 25 to 1 is uh, ridden by Richard Dunwoody. The fellow at 7 to 2, Adam Condrat. Travado at 7 to 1, Jamie Osborne, the man in form. And the young hustler at 14 to 1 is the man of David Bridgewater. That's the lineup then for this Grade 1 King George VI triple print chase. And wearing his habitual blinkers these days, the fellow who seems to have been around for ages, he's actually only nine years old, but this is his fifth consecutive King George, third last year, third to the Desert Orchid back in 1990, but marvellously triumphant in between. But they come down towards the final fence, and it's the French horse, the fellow, that's come to your take it. The fellow leaped it at the last from Dockland's Express on the inside. Remittance man staying on one in third, but the fellow is going to take it. And at the line, it's the fellow who wins. The fellow takes the King George a six rug chase. They've got one to jump, and it's Pat's Chester on the extreme left, but here comes the fellow on the right, coming to challenge as they come to take the final fence. Three in the air together, and the Eddie Wacker is the one that's cracked, and it's the fellow going on now. Pat's Chester on the far side, and it's the fellow who's going to take it for the second consecutive year. The fellow is the winner of the King George of Six Steeple Chase. And if he wins today, the fellow will join Wayward Lad as a three times winner of the King George. But remember, this horse, the fellow, was beaten in the race last year. He could finish only third behind Barton Bank. Now, last year's winner, Barton Bank. Very interesting to see him after his bad fall. He's had a few problems since Weatherby in October. Mind you, the word is that he's back to his best, and if he is, the others had better watch out. And who could forget the thrilling way he won last year's race? But remember, as you watch this again, the first four home last year take each other on again today. And Bradbury Star is still pulling double. And this is the third last, and Barton Bank is over it. Bradbury Star, a slight mistake. Young Hustler and the fellow, and Bradbury Star with a red cap. And Cetus Ladd, five in line. Would you believe it as they come to take the second last? And what a terrific jump. Cetus Ladd was the only one, a slightly uncomfortable. And Barton Bank has the edge from the fellow, and Bradbury Star, who's yet to make his challenge. Here comes Bradbury Star on the stand side to come and leap the final fence in the lead, but Barton Bank won't be denied. The fellow, the Frenchman's cut, and it's Barton Bank and Bradbury Star doing battle as they race up towards the line. Barton Bank digging deep, holding up. Bradbury Star, one more challenge. Not enough. Barton Bank takes it. Barton Bank, the winner from Bradbury Star in second place. The fellow in third. Declan Murphy, who was in the plate on Bradbury Star last year, he's out hunting with the Scar team in Ireland today. The mount going to Pip Hyde, and a really good combination. Already won the Mackeson this year, and he looks in really good nick with himself. This horse just tend to feel that the ground maybe just gone against him slightly. This horse who's much happier on a faster surface than we've got here this afternoon but nonetheless he's always with a lot of quality and it really is a fascinating race the winner of 18 races Bradbury Star and well Josh Gifford who you see there giving Philip Hyde a leg up Josh is convinced that he's as good as he's ever had him and maybe a little bit better 
as I saw him in his box the other day, Josh would uh, go up to him late in the evening, giving him a carrot or so, and then say, what do you think of Brad Bristar? Uh, what do you think of Barton Bank? <laughs> and Brad Bristar has got into the habit of laying his ears back when he hears the words Barton Bank. Or oh, that's what it looked like anyway. Um, well, they had that tremendous battle last year, and here's the other half of the his rival Bradbury Star, this fellow Barton Bank, he, at that year when he won the race, his jumping wasn't really perfect all the way around. I remember John saying that Adrian was doing a wonderful job uh, getting him right at the fences so often. There is that problem, and of course there's the much bigger problem of breaking blood vessels, which he's done at least twice in his life, and uh, now he's got that injury at Weatherby to cope with. It it leaves no, no damage as far as we know. But uh, we talked to Adrian Maguire earlier on and asked him how confident he was that Barton Bank was back to his best. Well, reports are from the yard. David Nicholson and his lad that rides him all his work and rides him out every day that he's in great form. Um, I've schooled him several times since and has jumped very well. And he looks great in his coat. Um, I don't think I've ever seen the horse look so well. So are you worried at all about the fall he had at Weatherby on his first outing? No, I, I'm, I wouldn't be worried because, as I said, I, I've schooled him several times before and he jumped very well. And that day in Weatherby, I think he was unlucky to fall. Um, he, he seemed to jump the, uh, the fence pretty well, but seemed to slip on landing. Um, the ground seemingly does run away from the backs of the fences up the straight in Weatherby. And, um, I think he was unlucky, but he jumped well since then. So you're confident today, but there are plenty of dangers. Which are your biggest? Of course, Bradbury Star, you know, I only beat him ahead last year. Um, but just walking across the track, we flew in. Fellow, we saw him early this morning going out with his stable companion, Algan, and I don't think, I've, in fact, I know that I've never seen him look better or harder or fresher and more on his toes, really. He looks uh, at peace with the world, so he should do at Kempton, where he's done such wonderful things in the past. A fine big horse this, still hard to believe that he's only a nine-year-old, seems to have been about forever. He's had a mixed season, over hurdles in fences. Let's have a look at his last run at O'Toy. Comes up the favoured stand side where the ground can uh, often ride a fair bit faster than the other side. And he's battled on really well. I thought he was probably going to have to settle for second or third place. Just watch him at the last flight here, a mixture between hurdles and fences. A little bit knobbly there, jumped that flight of hurdles as you'd expect a seasoned chase or two, giving it probably a lot more respect than necessary. And battles on really well. You may have heard Francois Dumas saying that he thought this horse may have won if Adam Pondrat had uh, just given him a couple more cracks. Well, that might have been the case. And it's three to one the field. Bradbury Star's just gone from eleven to four to three to one. A fellow half a point easier now at seven to two from three. Still at seven to two, Barton Bank. Support, more support, significant support, you could say, for Monsieur Le Curie. In two four points from eights, now down to six to one. Remaining at sevens, Travado, still at fourteen to one, young hustler. Algan, who opened at sixteens and shortened to fourteens, is back to sixteen to one. And it's twenty-five to one, the other two, Gale again, and second schedule. And there he goes, past the crowd that loves him, and I think he loves the crowd too. There's an orchid. Uh, the last time I saw him was at Walthamstow Dog Track. It was a horrible night, but he was uh, in his element being cheered, and you can see now that his ears are pricked, despite the fact that this is the straight, the last straight he galloped down in serious action when he had a fall at the third last of the King George and galloped home riderless and the crowd cheered him then and they're cheering him now. Monsieur Le Cure, he's won round here before, he turned into the best day in novice chaser of last season, really came Good with a flourish at the end with the Sun Alliance and then going on to Aintree where he won by 20 lengths. 
can't be soft enough for this horse. He began the campaign looking really big for his first run over at uh, Rover in Ireland behind Mary Gale and quite rightly got quite tired in the closing stages but then he came to Cheltenham just a couple of weeks later and ran a real blinder I thought over two and a half miles ran on really well in the closing stages he's an exciting prospect when he's fit and uh, certainly the ground come just right for him Yes, the question is whether he's come to himself, really. He, he, he took an awful long time to uh, reach top form last year. He's certainly on the way there. Uh, the question is whether he's reached that uh, level of form that would be needed to win here. Al Gann, the second string uh, of uh, Francois Duma and the Marquesa de Moratala, leading them down. Leading Barton Bank, Bradbury Star, then Gale again in the pillar colours. Monsieur Le Cure, behind Monsieur Le Cure, the Irish horse second schedule. Now the fellow, and the fellow is followed by Trovado. And last but not at all least, particularly to his many supporters in the BWH country, Young Hassler. Well, Desert Orchid, you know, people talk about parades and whether we should have them or not. I know it's jumping, but how the crowd reveled in it. And when Desi came out, a great roar went up from the crowd of appreciation. He pricked his ears and heard them. And it was this great spirit of national hunt racing, which we get so much, especially here, seeing the great Desert Orchid. Now, Bradbury Star is put in the three to one favourite, and they're applauding again. The great applause going up there. Is this the crowd coming back here? Here he goes, there goes Desert Orchid, look to the crowd, right round the stands, and a great well of noise going up as Desert Orchid goes past. Splendid sight, really heartwarming that is. Now Bradbury Star has put in the 3 to 1 favourite, Victor Chandler's led to 12,000 to 4, but it's being pushed out because bookmakers want to get more money out of it, with us 100 to 30 now against Barton Bank and eight horses have won at least one King George. Seven to two against the fellow, and very strong now. People think he could be a mud slog here. Horses finishing very tired for Monsieur Le Cure, who was 12 to one in the offices this morning, eight to one on the course, now six to one Monsieur Le Cure. It's then seven to one Travado, 14 to one young Hustler, who was fourth last year. Well, well Halloween was fourth to Galloway Brays, went to one better a year later in 54. 16 Algon, 25 the rag, the greatest jockey I must ask you briefly about Barton Bank. Psychologically, that disaster at Weatherby, how will it affect the horse mentally? Will he be able to take a rough and tumble King George after that Weatherby during the splits and falling? I shouldn't think it'll bother him at all, Mac. He's a tough individual. He'd have been well schooled since then. And you can just see the remains of the scars down the front of his face there. And he'll be here ready to do battle you can have no doubt about that there have been two there have been two victories already this afternoon one was colin brown not being run away with by desert orchid and the other was adam shakespeare who's got the best turned out prize for young hustler and i don't wonder because he looks absolutely magnificent he was only fourth in this race last year but the ground may be more testing now perhaps it will test his bring his courage and stamina more into play who knows the one certainty is that he won't run a bad race because he never does that was also his third race in 16 days last season jamie osborne just pulling his goggles down david bridgewater and let's just mention Carl Llewellyn and uh, Peter Caldwell, two jockeys on the sideline. And Carl Llewellyn, you'd have expected to have been riding Young Hustler. Hope they're both well on the way to recovery. Let's have a look at Al Gunn. He's a, a half-bred like uh, the fellow. And he's a horse with lots of ability. Not thought of as um, quite in the same class as his stable companion. But here, nonetheless, due to the fact that he's shown bags of promise. Travado looked really well in his coat beforehand, good mover in his slower paces. Jamie Osborne, probably keep him up there in the first three or four, keep him interested. I know he felt that he just tipped up, maybe just because he lack of interest, maybe thought they weren't going fast enough for him last season. Well, he wouldn't be the first 
two-miler or was known to be a two-miler who proves his stamina over three for the first time in the King George. Desert Orchid did and so have several others. Maybe Travaglia will today. But there they go, Graham. 130 joint favourites at the off and they've got 19 fences to jump and it's Young Hustler who's showing the way on this occasion down towards the first of the 19. It's a plain fence. Young Hustler in the yellow and blue leading. The fellows on the outside, Barton back the inner and they're at the first which they all take it safely. The Irish raid again and again is the trailer and they go down towards the second which is the first of the open ditches they take. Young Hustler then wide of Barton Bank who's on the inside, one and two. Second schedule touches down in third now. Bradbury Star is uh, holding the four spot as they make a right-handed turn at the end of the first uh, quarter mile. Then comes uh, Monsieur Le Cure following Bradbury Star, Travado mid-division, second schedule the out to side. And Gail again is one of the back markers. So they level up down the back stretch then. And it's Young Hustler who leads. Young Hustler on the outside of Barton back. There, one and two. The pace looks uh, steady but uh, secure. Second schedule is holding third place. And then the fellow on the outside of Bradbury Star followed through by Travado, Miss Le Cure, and Algan and Gail again. Come down towards the third then. Plain fence this. And Barton Bank, the star jacket on the inside. Gale again, the back marker. Barton Bank it is. They've got another open ditch to take now. Monsieur Le Cure, Norman Williamson pulling him wide. Come down towards this open ditch. Barton Bank, the green and white stars, takes it in the lead. And a slight mistake there, if anything, by the fellow. At least not as fluent as he was at some of the others. Gale again, still the trailer. Come down towards fence number five then. Barton Bank, young hustler, second schedule. Bradbury star, Monsieur Le Cure, the fellow and Al gun out wide. Over the next plain fence. All safely over. Travado's on the inner. Head down towards uh, the six, and it's Barton Bank by a couple of lengths. Barton Bank, two in second place, Young Hustler, and then comes second schedule, then Bradbury Star. Then the fellow who's uh, jumping well on the outside, but there's our leader, Barton Bank, as they turn out of the back straight for the first time. Young Hustler in second place. Second schedule holds third, and Bradbury Star four. And then we have the fellow on the outside, followed through by Alga, Miss Le Cure. Travado hugs those rails, and the one detached by about three lengths is Gale again. They're through the first mile then in this King George VI triple print chase, and it's Barton Bank, the last year's winner, shows the way. Young Hustler, a winner of 14 races in second place. Second schedule is third. This is the seventh. No change. Algan is uh, last but one. They come down towards fence number eight. And it's Barton Bank in the lead. Young Hustler on the outside. Then we have second schedule and the fellow out wide of Bradbury Star. Philip Hyde in the blue and red has to play his hand very late indeed. This will be the last next time round. There's only about uh, ten lengths between them. And Barton Bank leads as they come to it. Barton Bank it is from Young Hustler. Monsieur Le Cure gets a good position. Second schedule running away the inside and Bradbury Star. Followed by the fellow and Travado and Algan and Gale again. That's the order as they race up past us. They've got a circuit to go and it's Barton Bank who leads. Barton Bank from Young Hustler in second place. And then we have second schedule on the inside of uh, Monsieur Le Cure. Then comes uh, Bradbury Star. Head away towards the water jump. And it's Barton Bank who leads from Young Hustler. Barton Bank. Young Hustler got a bit low at that one. Bradbury Star Algan just uh, finding the pace a little bit hot. Towards the 11th, they've completed a circuit. This is the 11th they're coming to now. And it's Barton Bank and Young Hustler 1 and 2. They've been in that position throughout. Monsieur Le Cure in third place. Then we have the fellow in the blinkers. Followed by Bradbury Star and second schedule running a big race in Travado. Then Algan just getting a little bit detached there, and Young Hustler didn't pick up as well as the others. And Barton Bank goes into a lead by two lengths. Monsieur Le Cure in second place, Young Hustler in third. Second schedule running a personal best on the inside. Bradbury Star is close up, then the fellow and Travado and Algan and Gale again. But in the lead, it's last year's hero, Barton Bank, who just has the edge. They make a right-handed turn, they've got seven more to jump, and Barton Bank, the 130 favourite. Bradbury Star is going after him at seven to two. The fellow is close enough there are seven to two. Michel Le Cure down to six to one. He's uh, on the inside now and they come down towards fence number 13. This is a plain fence and at it it was Barton Bank from in second place. We've, uh, the faller there was uh, Travado. 
Travado went at that one, the horse and jockey are okay. This is the 14th, this is the ditch. And it's Barton Bank, this is the Cure in Orange. Then goes the young hustler, the fellow on the outside. Then second schedule and Bradbury Star certainly close up. It's getting tough now, they've got five more to jump. Barton Bank still just has the edge to Missy Le Cure. Bradbury Star in the blue and red getting closer. Young Hustler, the fellow is out very wide indeed. He didn't take that one well. They've got four to jump in the King George. Barton Bank, Missy Le Cure. Second schedule, the inside of Bradbury Star. This is four from home. Barton Bank, Missy Le Cure. Bradbury Star and second schedule, who's certainly running his best race for a long time. The fellow looks beaten, so too Algad and Young Hustler as they begin the turn into the home straight. They've got three to jump. And it's Barton Bank in the lead. Orange colours, Missy Le Cure. Here goes Bradbury Star in the blue on the outside of second schedule. Back in uh, fifth place is Algad, who certainly started to go forward. The fellow is beaten and at the top of the home run. They've got three to jump. And it's Barton Bank. Bradbury Star being ridden along. Missy Le Cure in second schedule on the inside. Three out here. Barton Bank not that high. Missy Le Cure, a mistake. He didn't want to make one then. They've got two to jump. And Barton Bank has the edge. Clear by five. Two out. Barton Bank comes to it. Foot perfect. Second schedule in second. Missy Le Cure third. Bradbury Star hasn't got the answers. Algan staying on well. One more fence to jump and it's Barton Bank. Clear by six to eight lengths. He's got this fence between him and victory in this race at the last and he's gone through the top of it and he's unseated Adrian Maguire and this goes the whole gives it to Algan who's come through from nowhere to take up the running and Algan going on from Missy Le Cure down towards the final fence and Algan's going to take it up towards the line Algan it is Algan is the winner a photo second a close call Missy Le Cure second schedule there we had Young Hustler these are clear of Bradbury Star and so there is the hero of that final fence. Barton Bank and Adrian Maguire had the race in their grasp and it went to he, that fall, gave the race to Algan. This horse is only a 16, a 16 to 1 chance. He's only a six year old. This in the colours of the Marquesa de Moratana, trained uh, in France by Francois Dumas, ridden by Philippe Chevalier, having his first look at the track. And so the French neglected have come home to take this, the King George VI and Triple Prince Steeplechase. A sad and ejected, oh so sad Barton Bank, and an even more depressed Adrian Maguire, who, well, came to that final fence with the race in his grasp, but that race slipped away. It's gone over to France again. The fellow who was uh, much favoured in the betting, well, he couldn't land the race. But look at this Algan, the red colours coming through to third place there. Third place at best, Gail again is pulled up. Barton Bank comes down towards the final fence. He doesn't pick up at all. Gives Adrian absolutely no chances at all. Adrian keeps hold of the reins. It would have been a superhuman effort to, re to leap on board again. But uh, now the race, the whole complexion of the race has changed as uh, Barton Bank has sat and ejected Maguire come back. The whole complexion of the race changes because it goes to number one, Algan. A very close call indeed between Monsieur Le Cure and second schedule for second and third, and I'm determined to leave that one to the judge. Happy to say that Travado is uh, none the worse for his fall, in a similar place to where it was last year. He's OK, he's lost uh, Lions, but there is Barton Bank. So near, yet so very far. So Algan wins it on default, almost, but it's his name that'll go down into the form books. And he was given a smashing ride by Philip Chevalier, kept niggling and nudging along because he wasn't travelling at all well for most of this race, didn't come into himself until the last couple of furlongs and a real stay in chase of this and we'll just keep it up the incredible record of Francois Duman a winner with Nupsala a couple of wins with a fellow a win with Algan I'm surprised the French aren't coming over here in droves following Francois success and some very tired horses will be coming back after that great race Adrian uh, talking to the